Hello and welcome to Crucible of Words for more dedicated legacy action. Today, at the request of a donor, I am playing a Dark Depths slash Scam deck. So we're kind of pulling together two different worlds here and trying to make a better whole. I believe this list top eighted a, I want to say a challenge at some point recently, but I could be mistaken on that one. But it did top eight an event relatively recently. So, for those who aren't familiar, Dark Depths. Comes into play with 10 counters. When it has no counters, we get a 2020 flyer with it, who's also indestructible. Hex Mage can rip all the counters off it. Thespian Stage can become a copy that then doesn't have counters on and gives us a 2020. So that's kind of the, the A plan. But then we also have what is called the scam package. That's things like Grief and Troll of Kazadoom, which put themselves into our graveyard, getting us some effect on the way, either drawing us a swamp or taking apart our opponent's hand. And then we get to reanimate that. Sometimes we can grief and then reanimate grief and just our opponent's hand is shot to pieces. Alongside that, we've got some thought seizers to help with even more hand disruption. In terms of just other generically good cards, we've got these Orcish Bowmasters. And because we've got like a reasonable creature package, we're using Elvish Reclaimer as one of our tutors instead of something like Sylvan Scrying. This can tutor for both halves of our combo if it just sits in play for long enough. So it's really potent as well as some other silver bullets we'll talk about in a second. Crop rotation, obviously, don't need to say much about this. Just the best way of finding the land you need. We have two Legolas's Quick Reflexes. These can be removal, where we can, like, put it on the troll. When it attacks, it will shoot some damage at something. Then we also have the ability to protect our Merit Lage from Source of Plowshares or whatever. So it's kind of doing double duty there. Then we have a couple of Elvish Spirit guys, just for a little bit of fast mana, in case we want to ramp things out. But we're not going super into the fast mana. We're trying to play a slightly... Uh, I want to say fairer game, if you can call Grief Reanimate Grief uh, a fair plan. But that's kind of how we're trying to approach this one. In terms of the mana base, we've got Bayous. We've got Verdant Catacombs. We've got one of each basic. We've got two Wastelands, because we're playing this Elvish Reclaimer, so we can just keep pulling them up. We have one Echoing Deeps, which is an interesting one. It can become a copy of any land in our graveyard. So we can use that to get a second go with Bajooka Bog. So we can Bajooka Bog early, reclaim it into another one effectively. That's really strong. We've got a Caracas, a Sajiri Step. A, one of the new Surveil lands, which is pretty good extra value to have when we've got all these lands going on. We are running three Urborgs and one Yavimaya. So we've got a lot of ability to turn this into a mana producing land. And we have the one Beseju, which isn't a thing we're going to tutor for because once we tutor for it with the tutors we have in this deck, we don't actually get to channel it. But it's just a nice green source to have that has extra utility. Over to the sideboard. We've got some hate for artifacts in the collector roof and force of vigor force of vigor also being able to hit the blood moon is pretty cool too we've got some removal in dismember for things like magus of the moon if we need to protect our own hand we've got these veil of summers we can also use these to try and force through an important crop rotation a force of despair to help versus things like goblins a little bit of graveyard hate via fairy macabre and surgical extraction to complement our bajooka bog in the main deck and a couple of opposition agents for any deck that's going to be doing a lot of tutoring so things like cradle control that sort of jazz and yeah that's the deck so we've normally when you see me play turbo depths on the channel it's you know the linear turbo depths we're only winning the dark depths this deck has a lot more roots to win in the game. We're not necessarily as reliable at doing the depths thing, but we have other ways of winning the game. So it's kind of diversifying our threats. So I'm excited to play this one. It's got dark depths in it, so it's normally a good shout. I'm going to enjoy it. So without further ado, remember to like and subscribe and let's get jamming. If you're looking to play Legacy on MTGO like me, why not try Card Hoarder? They're a rental service that I personally use and I found them better than other rental services that I've used in the past. So why not give them a try? Right, we're on the draw. Our hand is a little bit awkward, but this Troll of Kazadoom does quite a bit of work for us. We can actually just make a turn two Dark Depths if we want to, which is an interesting option. Because we can do this, turn two, play the Depths, and we've got these two Spirit Guys to pitch. So I think I will keep this one. We can play out the Thespian stage, use that to cycle for a Troll, and then we can sort of see how we want to approach things okay this wasteland is a different prospect okay so i think we're just going to play out this thespian stage our opponent's going to wasteland it we're going to cycle this troll and we're just going to carry on with our lives that way all right they're cycling for a troll themselves so we're looking at probably uh some kind of scam style list possibly rescaminator but we'll see 
Like if they're just putting a troll in, a 2020 will race that, provided they can't remove it with something like a shoulder's edict. Right, let's swamp cycle here. Get ourselves a bayou, I think. So the issue here is if they reanimate the troll now and then have another wasteland, that should be good enough to beat us. So the other option we have was to spirit guide in the reclaimer on one. Okay, they're reanimating R1, that's interesting. So, if we want to try and make it in a way that will actually race the troll, we need to play the Thespian stage now, we take 6, we play the Dark Depths, we take 6, we make a 2020, we win the game. So that's probably the best route for us here. Just having all these Reclaimers just stranded in our hand. We do not want to see Wastelands. Like, we should be able to beat Counter Spells, we're just trying to dodge Wasteland and removal on our Paralage. Alright, they're brainstorming first. This obviously can find them a wasteland. I believe if our opponent does come up with a wasteland here, we do most likely lose. There's the wasteland. Okay. That's sad. Um, so, what do we have to actually deal with this troll? Not a great deal of anything. Um, I don't believe we can win. Uh, we could just play three... Elvish Reclaimers, but they will only be one twos, but then next turn they can do some work maybe. Alright, not in love with this play, but it's the one we have available to us. Let's cast this. So we have to take six and then we can triple block this, activate one of the Reclaimers, and we only trade one Reclaimer for the troll. Provided we get to actually resolve all these Reclaimers and have them stick. All right, so that's not going to work. Okay, so we could draw another Reclaimer. We can't draw a two drop here because we don't have the mana for it. We could reanimate their creature. That is a little sketchy. We could reanimate our own creature. That's acceptable. But the Reclaimers won't be the correct size to actually defeat this troll. So, how are we getting around this one? That is a good question. We don't have a land that can answer this troll. There's no Maze of Iths hidden away in our mana base. Okay, deck. I'm not sure what I'm actually looking for here. An Urborg. Yeah, we got nothing here. We need to concede this one. That's unfortunate. Like, we could have played this game differently and played out the Reclaimer. But we just had a very clean way to beat a single Wasteland as well. But it just didn't get us there. So, Surge Extraction on either their creatures they're reanimating or their wastelands are both pretty good here. The Veil of Summer is nice to protect our hand from all these scary things our opponent can throw at us. The Opposition Agent is good versus Entomb and Fetch Lands, but I don't think that's how I want to play this one. And I do want some removal for their trolls. Fairy Macabre is an interesting one. So, Surge Extracting Wasteland is a pretty viable play with a deck constructed like ours is. I don't think we need to worry about this quick reflexes. Our opponent's not going to be really interacting with our creature outside of Edicts. They might have one or two Brazen Borrowers, but I think we're better off just like fighting that with Griefs and Thought Seizers. Uh, but Dukebog is actively useful in this one. Caracas. It can bounce the Attractor, so I think it's probably worth trying here. So at the moment, we've got rid of two reflexes for two extractions. Uh, are we into the fast mana from the spirit guide or do we want some answers to troll? I think we do want answers to troll. Uh, we don't really want this force of despair. So it's a case of do you want opposition agent? Probably not. Do you want fair and macabre? Maybe. We could lose something like a thought seize or we could trim on crop rotation because it's obviously not amazing against blue decks. Because we don't really want that getting countered. Alright, I think I've convinced myself to play this one fair and macabre. We can always play it as a creature or pitch it to a grief. It's not like completely wasted. So what does this hand do? We go and get a forest, we play our reclaimer, and that eventually gets us to our combo. That's acceptable. Right, I think we are on the basic forest here. Previous game we decided to play around counter magic and things rather than trying to ram out some reclaimers. Now our opponent did show us a counter spell as well in that game, so not necessarily a bad thing to do. But we also played around one wasteland last time, but they had two. All right, they're going to take our Dismember. But we can Underground Mortuary to get a little bit of 
card selection, or we can play a Thespian stage and be ready to do stuff with our Reclaimer. So we've got a little bit of flexibility next turn, depending on what we draw, might change things. Our opponent might have had a reanimation spell, but saw that we had nothing, and they thought they might as well try and ponder and sculpt rather than putting this grief into play. Or they just might not have had the reanimate. So we have a reclaimer, we can do some stuff with this in a minute. We've got double Thespian stage, so I don't mind playing one out here and throwing it into the bin. Um, another reclaimer is interesting. Would I rather hold up a reclaimer activation or get another reclaimer going? That is an interesting proposition. By having the reclaimer up, we cut off reanimate lines. So it's a case of either we play the reclaimer and underground mortuary and bash for one, or we play the Thespian stage, hold up things like Paducah Bog here, which I think is probably the safer bet here. Like we do want to get three lands in our graveyard relatively quick. So we're using the Reclaimer this turn means that we could be odds on for getting a three four, a couple of three fours into play, which will be a lot of their fair plan. And then we have their unfair plan covered with the Reclaimer. All right, a Brainstorm. Sure. We can go and fetch something like a Wasteland here. And that will give us the ability to get our Reclaimers both being three fours. Under City Sewers. We're getting a Surveil action going. They put one card on top of their library. Interesting. We can get rid of the stage for now. Just debating what is the correct play here. And if we get the Verdant Catacombs, that gives us the same uh, amount of lands and graveyard that we require. Sure, we'll do that. So we'll crack this, get ourselves a Bayou. And then... Probably playing this Thespian stage here. Play out this Reclaimer. And then we can hold up this. We can go and get a Dark Depths if we want to. And then pressure with two, three, fours, and a 2020 on the following turn. There is a Wasteland, sure. A Dalphy Voidwalker. Okay, that's not really where my fight is here. We're not going to do this into our opponent's Wasteland. A Reanimate, you say. That is an interesting little plan, isn't it? Um, I'm into reanimating this grief. Who's the scammer now? Alright, so we can see our opponent's hand and then make decisions about what we need to do here. Animate dead, reanimate orcish bowmasters. Um, we don't really care about a bunch of these. I think animate dead is kind of the most annoying one here. If they have exactly... If they have exactly Entomb coming up, that could be an issue for us. Which means we leave our guy back. Alright, so we'll play that one out. I don't really want to put any cards in our graveyard. Like the, um, any monsters. We can still attack here with a 3-4. Hold up the other 3-4. And then I'll play out this, this basic... So if our opponent wastelands us here, that leaves them, like, we won't be able to get the Paducah Bog to stop our opponent's way of winning the game here. So what we actually need to do is just let them wasteland our Thespian stage, yeah. That's why we play the land out here. So we still have Paducah Bog available. Whereas if we do that, our opponent can entomb, put an Arc of Cruelty in this play, and then it's going to be very hard for us to come back there. Right, there is a Daffy Voidwalker coming in. That's A OK with me. Dark Depths is interesting. All right, let's swing with these two friends. They can do the Orcish Bowmasters here, block this. All right, that's what they're going to do. So they have to put both of these. Am I OK trading this grief for these guys? Interesting. Wait, like, the other thing here is we could get a Sajiri step, kill both of these. Alright, we're doing three here. Um, do we need to get the Sajiri step? That's an interesting proposition here. That, that does go shields down on a bunch of things. They do get to reanimate the Grief or the Bowmasters as they see fit. Interesting. Do I want a Sajiri step? Keep these alive. And then just crack our opponent. Because this will put our opponent to 13. And then we have a two-turn clock. 
attack for six, then attack for nine. Interesting. Because at present, if we just have what we've got in play now, we go to 13, hit him for six, then the following turn, and then we don't really get anywhere. But we could just go and get a... No, I think we're going to let this hit, and then we're going to go and get a, a Thespian stage. And then we can threaten a 2020. All right, here is the Entomb. This is why we've kept the Reclaimer. There's an Attractor in the Graveyard. We're going for the reanimate on the attractor as expected. So then we get rid of the forest here. No, yeah, we get rid of the forest because we have black black spells that we want to cast. We could have got rid of our swamp, I suppose. But like I said, black black spells we can't be wasted off of black black with what we have in play right now. Now there is an issue here in that there is a Thespian stage underneath our opponent's Dalthy Voidwalker. So they could be the one to 2020 us. So we do have to be careful about that. Either leaving up Reclaimers or just getting rid of our Dark Depths proactively. A Wasteland. That is actually pretty helpful here. That stops our opponent doing multi-spells. We'll get rid of the Surveil Land. So we crack for three here. We make the, the, the Dark Depths into a thing in the very near future. So this can also become the great head. We are just gonna lose this Dalthy Void Walker if we don't pull the trigger on getting a 2020 here. My opponent hasn't given me reason to believe they have anything like a Stifle in their deck. There's not really the room for it in these Rescaminator builds. They're very tight on space. Let's sacrifice this Padukabog. Let's go and get our Thespian stage. An Orcish Bowmaster's meant that we could have just been jamming and been alright. Um, we'll have a little surveil action. Uh, this into our graveyard. So this means we have the 2020 and the Bowmasters. So we're trying to dodge our opponent's Bowmaster here. Alright, we managed to get that one. That was quite a, a tricksy one. There's definitely a lot of different avenues we could have gone for. Alright, so do I want these Veil of Summers now? Or do I just like what we've got going on. Um, honestly, I think we're we're fine where we are. Happy to ball in again. Um, we've got some tools, but this hand doesn't really go anywhere. Is this worth keeping? Double oil borg is already a mulligan. I think we might as well just take a fresh one. Yuck! That's not what we want to see. We want some mana sources. All right, we we have to mulligan this one, so. Okay, this is something we can keep. So, Thespian Stage. Um, crop Rotation, these things. We kind of want the Grief to clear the way, which means we're probably pitching this Thespian Stage. All right, this also gives us access to Pajukabog if that's the thing we need. These Rescaminated decks don't reanimate until turn two because the turn one, well, they can reanimate grief is anything they reanimate on turn one. But generally, they're either cycling their troll or casting an entomb first, and they don't have fast mana. Grief will put a grief into our opponent's uh, zone of messing us over. So let's grief pitching grief still. We've got this fairy macabre which can save us. There's going to be an entomb. No, nope, just cycling a troll. Let's see what you're working with there with their opponent. Days, Entomb, Grief, Ponder. Interesting. Um, I guess the Entomb is kind of the scarier one there. So we can kind of get through the other things more, more or less. Not like I'm not a big fan of having the Ponder, but this is all acceptable. So we've got the Fairy Macabre. They find a black card, they do get to grief us, which will take our Fairy Macabre, but we will take, I guess we'll take our crop rotation. Hmm. Right, we're seeing a ponder here. We just don't want to get griefed this turn. Because if we can have crop rotation with mana to pay around days, that'd be good. The other option when we're trying to affect our opponent's hand is to take the days, but then if they grief us, then they have an entomb. And that's not where I want to be. They would like to reanimate the Troll of Khazad-dûm. 
Right, we're going to get rid of this, and we're going to get rid of... I want to get rid of our grief. That does make our own reanimates worse, is the only question. Um, right, we'll get rid of the two creatures. So this will fizzle the reanimate. We can go and get our surveil land now to get a little bit of value at end step. Let's get some card selection going. Surveil lands are great. Uh, is this surgical extraction where I want to be? I don't think it is. Oh, okay. Oh, I've misclicked and put that on top. Great. Okay, I guess that is where I want to be. Do we have a crop rotate for something like a wasteland here? Yeah, there it is. We can pay around this days. I think we would like a bayou here. We'd like to be able to cast the spells in our deck. So we can search and extract this wasteland in our opponent's upkeep. If that's thing we're interested in doing, but we'll see what we draw and go from there. All right, let's get a reclaimer up and running. So now we have to decide what we're we more worried about. Our opponent having a wasteland here or being able to entomb reanimate. I think it's probably the entomb reanimate that scares me the most. A dress down. Okay, our opponent just needs to draw an extra card here. Sure. So Entomb Reanimate is still a possibility for them next turn. Because they'll have two mystery cards. Okay, Cycling Control in the upkeep. Okay. Under City Sewers. They've seen... They've seen the Extraction before. I think that's the thing they're playing at around. Okay, so now we have the graveyards covered and we've got this clunky surgical extraction. It's not really helping us. So we just want to make land drops here for the most part. Right, there is a Thespian stage. We'll pass a turn. We get to make our creature larger. We can also find a Dark Depth, so any land off the top gives us a 20-20. That's pretty tasty. Polluted Delta. So we're probably going to hard cast a Grief here. Okay. So, what are we most worried about here from our opponent? I think if we fire this off, we can take out all their trolls. We can take out all their reanimates. I'm not really worried about the reanimates that much. We can take out all the entombs. We can take out the wastelands and kind of dig in our heels here. I'm going to hit the wastelands. Like, we've got our plan here. This can cover graveyards anyway. And we're paying the life for this so we can... Right, so they're bouncing their Undercity Sewers. Uh, yes, I'd like to pay. So we're looking at here. Um, yeah, still got full rescan. They have three Way of the Forgottens. But that's a sorcery, so we can play around that because we don't have to worry about Wastelands anymore. There is one Brazen Borrower that can kill it and the Arkham Cruelty, obviously. All right. You can continue with your grief. Down the end step. Let's go and get a Dark Depths. If we find ourselves a land of any description, then we've got a 2020. We did not find a land. We did, however, find a reanimate. Does that change anything here? We could turn this into an Urborg to give us Black Manor off of this and guarantee that we can make a 2020 next turn. And then we can also play the troll. The troll will put us down to 11. That's a four turn clock. Three, six, nine, twelve. 12. But we can kill them in a three turn clock. They get the first hit. Um, okay. Our opponent. So the one thing that could punish us here is if they get a brainstorm into Entomb Reanimate. Is that worth worrying about or should we just smash a troll in at them? I'm just going to smash a troll in at them. I will sacrifice this. Going to get ourselves an Urborg. This means this now taps for black. Get this troll. So we've got nine here. So this is almost a two-turn clock. And we also have a 2020 next turn. And we know that they can't wasteland us off of it. So this is pretty good. There's the Undercity Sewers. Let's see if they find anything useful. And there's an Attractor in the Graveyard. But they also draw a reanimate spell. Because that would suck a lot. They did not. Okay, that's good news. Well, they might be doing a second main, I suppose. We don't get to block this. Alright, no reanimation spell. We have dodged there. 
I will take that. All right, there's a land. Not unhappy to see that one. So we're going to attack. Do we need to attack here, or can we just double block their guy? We just double block their guy, right? Double block their guy, hold up Bajuka Bog, just make a 2020 end step. There is an island. Interesting. What is this attack? We'd like to brazen borrower our troll of Kazadoom. Okay. So I think the last card in our opponent's hand is a swamp. So we can just win with a Sajiri step next turn to get through this borrower. We know they only have one borrower in their deck. So I think we've got this one. Let's do uh, the thing that I do many times. Make a Merit Lage. Right, it's our turn. Uh, the thing they bounced allows them to uh, cycle their own troll, but that's not really going to be relevant here. I'll right, swing with this. In comes the Brazen Borrower. We go against the Jury Step. Our opponent loses the game. With zero mana available. Give it protection from blue, so it can't be blocked. All right. We got the game and the match. Uh, yeah, those are some really good games. They show you how good Elvish Reclaimer is in Legacy right now. It is so good against the Scam decks. Like, as soon as you have two mana in this untapped, they're just kind of at a really awkward impasse because they don't actually run that much removal. All right, let's go to round two. All right, uh, a hand with Elvish Reclaimer is a hand I'm happy to keep. Given enough time, Elvish Reclaimer can always find you your combo. We've also got good old Orcish Bowmasters, which is a pretty tasty card in Legacy right now. So let's play this Reclaimer. We do have an emergency crop rotation we can fire off using this Elvish Reclaimer, uh, using this uh, Elvish Spirit Guide, sorry. So things looking A-OK. -okay. Obviously, we don't know what our opponent's playing. We could just have a hand that does nothing against what they're up to. That's the fun of Legacy. An Ancient Tomb Gamer. Okay. Interesting. So, Orcish Bowmaster's unlikely to be amazing here. Now, they could still be like a show-and-tell deck that's doing cantrips and stuff. But if they're leading on Ancient Tomb, that either means they're going quickly or not. Uh, okay. A Fury. How much do I care about this Fury? We have another Reclaimer. They spent two cards to answer our Reclaimer. I don't think we're getting a Sejiri step here. Uh, we just uh, say goodbye to our Reclaimer. And they'll say goodbye to their Fury. We also got a Broadside Bombardiers off of that, which is pretty impressive. A Chalice of the Void where X equals 1. That is less what we want to see. How are we going to go about beating that? Um, that is an interesting one. So we could, we could crop rotate. We're going to crop rotate in response. Because we don't get to crop rotate if we don't do this. So what is the option here? We could go and get the Dark Depths, but that shuts us off of mana entirely. So we can't even play this Orcish Bowmasters next turn. We get the Thespian Stage. That gets us halfway towards the combo. We already have the Black Source here. We get a Wasteland and try and hit our opponent that way. We could get the Underground Mortuary just to get a little bit of extra value. I think I want the Thespian Stage here. That gives us lines through what our opponent's doing. All right, a chance to avoid for zero as well. Not that impressive of a hand. Um, hmm. Would I like to wasteland our opponent off of there any any land over there? Yes, yes, I would. Say goodbye to your ancient tomb opponent. Like getting this Orcish Bowmaster in play isn't very useful. Like, this is not a matchup where this card is going to shine. It can do some stuff. Like maybe it trades with a Rabble Master. Ooh, did our opponent not have a second of that? Well, that's excellent for us. Okay. So, you've got the Hex Mage. We just need a Black Source and a Depths. Although, if we get a Black Source and a Depths, we can do that with the stage. So, I think we're going to start clocking our opponent. They have a an Ancient Tomb mana base. So, being able to pick apart their life total and make Ancient Tombs more costly is important. We are not just a straight-up Turbo Depths deck. We do have... A game plan where we just beat our opponent down. Echoing Deeps. Would I like a Wasteland or would I like a Bayou? Hmm. I think I would like a Bayou. So we can cast our Hex Mage. We can also remove counters from the um, Chalice of the Void if we do that. And then we can play our Elvish Reclaimer which can then find our Dark Depths. So we've kind of got a circuitous route towards the combo provided we don't get Blood Mooned in the near future. Alright. 
an Urborg. Okay, don't hate that one. So we're going to get Hex Mage here. So if we sack this to hit the Chalice and then play our Elvish Reclaimer, we can go and find Dark Depths next turn. But if our opponent's got something like a Fury, we get really blown out. So I think we're just going to just keep attacking with these. We've got four power in play to our opponent's one land. So I think that's reasonable. Vampire Hex Mage having First Strike can sometimes be relevant as well on these boards. Rabble Masters and stuff, not always good friends with those. All right, I think we just attack for four here. It's a pretty big bite out of crime right there. Uh, sure. Uh, do I want to reclaim up? Do I want to Bajookabog anyone? We have to target player, don't we? So do I want to make my Elvish Reclaimers worse or do I want to make our Reanimates better? Hmm, interesting. I think I'm going to Bajookabog ourselves here. Because we can use the Hex Mage to get rid of the counters on Chalice and then reanimate the Fury. Apparently has got a second land here. Okay, assuming Spirit Guide, we're going to see a Broadside Bombardiers, perhaps. A Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Sure. That's a pretty reasonable Magic the Gathering card. All right, we're going to get ourselves another buy off of this stage. So the first strike on here is going to be pretty useful. So maybe if we'd have gone down the Elvish Reclaimer line, we could have uh, won this game by now. But maybe we just got super blown out by Fury. We don't know. If they want to draw some extra cards here, we will be able to ping them down. Alright, so we get to ping out their Shaman here. That also grows our Orc army. So Fury can't clean up our entire board if they pitch cast it. Alright, there's a City of Traitors. What are you going to do with this one? A Goblin Settler. Okay, this is the deck that Phil was playing the other day. Right, let's see what they want to target first. If they target our Thespian stage, we can just copy a mountain with it. All right, yeah. Oh, no, this is destroy target land. It's any land, isn't it? Um, is that a thing I care about right now? Wait, this isn't the deck Phil was playing, because Phil was playing full-on goblins. Um, sure, that goes away. But we've got pretty good beat down here, and these are going to have to start going under the bus. They can obviously copy this with... Fable, soon. A um, little bit unfortunate there with our... I'll draw that. Do we... Yeah, I'm happy to trade our Bowmaster for the Settler before it starts copying and blowing all of our things up. Right, they're going for that trade. That will put them down to a pretty low life total here, going down to two. So Ancient Tombs are going to be off. We can use this Sejuri step to get through any blockers they may have. For example, a Fable of the Mirror Breaker. We can also, if they pitch cast a Fury, we can do some stuff with that too. Because we can remove the counters off of the Chalice, go and get ourselves a... Oh no, the Series Steps in our hand, isn't it? A favor of the Mirror Breaker. That doesn't... That doesn't really stop them. Like They think it does because they end up with two blockers here, but they don't know we have this Sejuri Step. Right, so I think we might have gone our way through this one now. Play this. Give this guy pro red. Bash for three. All right, we got that game. Okay, so we're looking at a deck that's probably going to have some things that we want to blow up in terms of our Force of Vigors. We're quite likely to want to dismember things as well. Um, some of these other cards have other decks, but I'm not really convinced that's where I want to be with them. Um, Legacy's Quick Reflexes is not great here. I'm not wholly convinced by that card in general. It's always underperformed for me, to be honest. Uh, sometimes, when it's good, it's very good, but it does underperform. So, Orcs Bowmasters, as we discussed, is kind of weak, but it can ping off these Settlers if that's the thing they're trying to copy, so it gets a little bit more use there. I like having these Spirit Guides here. On the draw, are we looking at... Trimming something like a Grief or a Thoughtseize, perhaps. We could trim one and one here. Try something along these lines. They're unlikely to know that we're doing... I guess we could board out the Caracas as well, actually. Um, okay, so we have the combo. We have protection from Blood Moon. If our opponent just plays a Blood Moon, then we can just play the Dark Depths. 
and then blow up their Blood Moon, attack them with a 2020, and have a nice time. Alright, our opponent's Mulligan to 5. They do have a Settlers, so they might be doing just land destruction rather than actual factual Blood Moon. But they're a mono red deck with Soul Lands. I'd be very surprised they didn't have some Blood Moons in their 75. Right, burn all your resources. Chalice of the Void for one. Okay. Crop rotation is off, but crop rotation is probably just going to be the green card for our force of vigor. And that's fine too. Our opponent mulligan pretty hard. I'm more than happy to wasteland our opponent into the dirt here. City of Traitors. Not an ideal land to have as your only land. And then you get one use out of it. Um, I would like to play this snow-covered forest. So we could force a Vigor, force our opponent's hand, see if they've got anything good in there. And then try and reanimate it, but I don't think that's where I want to be here. Not this current situation. Um, we play this Urborg, though. That does change things a little bit if we can find a green source. Uh, sure, I'll play an Urborg out. So if we can find another green card, then we can just make a 2020 soon. Our opponent could have things like Sooner Spirit Guide for surprise ways of getting us. But we've got this Verdant Catacombs. This can find us a tasty little underground mortuary. Kind of want our opponent to play a Blood Moon because that just gives us a much easier line to make it 2020. Which is why I like playing Green Black Depths decks into Blood Moon decks. Alright, let's go and get ourselves a mortuary. See what we're working with on top of our library. Uh, this can go in the bin. We do not need any more of these. Force of Vigor. Okay, so we have a 2020 available to us now. So it's our opponent's turn. We can just Force of Vigor, Pitching Force of Vigor, Crop Rotate, get to the Thespian stage, kill our opponent. A classic of the genre. Has our opponent got anything? So, we could be playing around Dead Gone. That is the thing we could try and play around here. But how are we going to do that realistically? We could force a Vigor to blow this up. And then we get to Thoughtseize our opponent first. Make sure there's no dead gone in there. All right, so this taps for... We might as well tap this one. See what our opponent's working with. We can Thoughtseize twice if we need to, or we can reanimate something here. Uh, what have we got here? Fiery Confluence. That does some things. Settler. They do have the dead gone. Okay, they also have the Magus. The only red mana is the Spirit Guide. Right, we'll take that. Uh, do we want to... I don't think we need to discard anything else. We can just have double... We can have Sajiri step up as well as our 2020. This seems A-OK -okay to me. So we're right to play around the dead gone. Two mana in the pool. There's the mountain they found. What are we going to see off of this? Same as Spirit Guide. Into Goblin Settler. Uh, let's see which land of ours they would like to target. Okay, we will... Crop Rotate this away. Get ourselves a Thespian Stage. This will target this. Make the 2020. And we've still got Sir Jerry Step Up. And our opponent's seen the writing on the wall. I love playing Green Black Depth decks into <laughs> Red Prison. Uh, Goblin Set is interesting tech. Uh, I, the idea is that you can just start copying a bunch with your Fairy of the Mirror Breaker and mess with people. And it is very good if you're playing like Trinisphere. You can really sort of constrain your opponent's mana. But uh, it's, it's not a great card, it, you know. But there's a reason why they're playing it. It's not completely outlandish. All right, let's go to round three. We are two and a. Um, okay, we can keep this. It's not Grief Reanimate Grief, but... It's not a million miles away. So I think turn one, we're going to go and get ourselves our basics. We can play off two basics. Just get friendly neighborhood Elvish Reclaimer. And if we find another black car, we can like grief reanimate grief, hold up crop rotation, mess with our opponent that way. Burning Catacombs. Being cracked. A basic forest for our opponent. Also a snow covered forest. Once upon a time. All right, so the chances are they're playing some kind of cradle control deck. That's the most common deck that would have this start. There is a Fiend Arzan. There is an Egg Noble Hierarch. Understood. All right. What are we going to find this turn? 
So we can play another Borg out. That kind of helps our opponent a little bit. Um, we play out this Snow Cold Forest. We can turn this into a Dark Depths. Then we can just do our combo next turn. So I think we're just going to grief and make sure that we're not getting absolutely ruined by something our opponent's doing. I think that's the, the controlled play there. So we can't stop them getting a Fiend Artisan. We can't... Do we want to stop them getting a Reclaimer online? Reclaimer puts the lands into play tapped. So we don't actually care about that, right? So next time they play Reclaimer. The turn after, we crop rotate. So they play Reclaimer, then we make a 2020 whilst they get a common to play tap land. So it's just the natural order, I think, here. That's the scarier of the things. Which probably won't come as a surprise to our opponents. So we're likely to see the Fiend Artisan and a Reclaimer this turn. There's a Reclaimer, sure. There's the Cradle. Oh, they got Hierarch as well. Wait, what? They could have tapped this and then they could have had more mana off of their Cradle. I'm not a Cradle aficionado. That's not my job. Alright. Just want to get rid of this Swamp for a Thespian Stage, I think it is. Yeah, that'll do. Play this out. Um, i trying to think what they could get with a Fiend Artisan here. That could jam us up. Um, let's just do this all now while we know the coast is clear. Go and get ourselves a Dark Depths. Our opponent does play a Wasteland in their deck, so we might as well just go and make our friend right now. I don't believe there's anything they get with a Fiend Artisan here. They can get an Endurance, but if we find any land, then we can just stop that with a... Sejiri step anyway. But the Endurance can buy them a turn. Obviously, if we find a green source, we can just legless as quick reflexes, but they'd have to have the Endurance in play. But if they're fetching it off of the, in, the Artisan, then they're going to have it in play. So it's only if they naturally draw the Endurance that that line doesn't work. Wooded Foothills. So we know the two cards in our opponent's hand. There's going to be a Dryad Arbor, I think. Yeah. What does this Cradle do? Five... Six, seven, eight. Uh, is this crate hoof isn't lethal though? So it's a tracker, and then they block for a turn. Is the plan? So we just need to find any land or mana source that is untapped to win this one, unless our opponent finds something really good off of the attractor. All right, there's the attractor as predicted. Uh, okay, let's have a little read of what they've got here. Mm. None of these do it right now. But if we don't find a land, then things can get a little bit awkward. So kept Natural Order, Endurance, Gaia's Cradle. Alright, can we find a mana source in our deck that's got a lot of them? I hope so. We did not find the mana source. So we are dead now, right? They Natural Order up Crater Hoof. And that just kills us. Um, if we attack, this goes away, so that prevents 7 damage. But if we're on blocks, we can prevent way more than 7. So, I guess we're blocking. Yeah, we missed on the land there. That's savage. If this was a Yavimaya instead of an Urborg as well, which I think we have one of in our deck, uh, then we could have been fine here as well. Yeah. Unfortunate. I haven't done the maths here. That's... Something we work out when all the creatures turn sideways. But we get to block a pretty hefty chunk. But I do have so many creatures I don't believe we can survive this turn. Now we could have also drawn a Thought Seize and taken that natural order. And that would have brought us another turn as well. So if we had some good draws here. Right, they're playing the Fiend Artisan first. They want as many creatures attacking as possible. They can use this forest and the Fiend Artisan, and the Fiend Artisan to natural order here. They get big old crate hoofs. Right, they're playing this first. So they're going to play their second cradle out here. I haven't done the maths here. So this, this will shrink our reclaimer. So that means that we soak up a little bit less damage. Oh, they didn't, they didn't endurance us. Okay. Like they probably have way more damage than they need. So this is going to be one, one, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. 
So 6 times 6 is 36. We block 14 of this. This is 10, 20. So we block 20. So we block 14 and we block 4. So we're still taking 10, 12. Yeah. So if they turn everything sideways, we die. Because we didn't find a land at the time. Yeah, that was unfortunate. I probably know that uh, they got a bit lucky with us not finding the land there because they're going to know that that's the thing that's on our deck. So what is good against this matchup? Opposition agent is pretty good. Dismembers are pretty good. And just generally, I think our deck is quite well suited to this one. So this is good. I like the opposition agent here. This helps us get through some annoying blockers. I don't believe we need Caracas for this one. I don't particularly like Bajukabog. It's fine. Uh, maybe because we are slightly grindier, maybe we, we want this. But I'm not convinced we're a Pajuka Bog. Okay, so we get rid of that. I'm not sure how much we need the fast mana. Although well, accelerating out an opposition agent against our opponent is going to make them very sad. I don't mind making our opponent very sad. Okay, I think this is the cleanest way of doing it. We want the Besager in case I have something like a Caracas that we need to deal with. And it's also just a green source as well, so it's kind of part of our actual mana base to cast spells. Uh, Force of Despair is interesting. Um, like, we can use this to blow up the hoof itself. But I think we're just in a better spot with the other bits and pieces. Like, ping off their little guys with Bowmasters, dismember their middle-sized guys, opposition agents, try and lock them out, just make a big guy. This is a, definitely a matchup that I enjoy playing with Turbo Depths. We're on something slightly different, so we've got a little bit more of some kinds of interaction here. Alright, um, we're kind of seeing part of the issue with our sort of grief plan here. I think we do keep this. We have a turn 3 2020. But we don't find off the grief straight away. We'd rather have a chance at hitting our opponent's natural order. So if we wait a turn, we're more likely to do that. Uh, do I want this Urborg in play? Yes, because if we draw Vampire Hex Mage, we just get to kill our opponent. But we are seeing how... The lack of black cards in our deck for Grief, compared to a lot of the decks that do play Grief, is catching up with us a little bit. On top of that, a lot of the black cards we have are ones we want to cast. Now, we can obviously just pitch this, and it's just like having a Bad Thought Seize, more or less. And that's, you know, Bad Thought Seize is better than No Thought Seize. So, I don't believe we're firing anything off right now. I think the plan is... Next turn, we will grief our opponent. And then we'll see what shakes loose. Because they can't natural order us unless they've got a spirit guide here. Alright, another mana dork. A wooded foothills. We're going to see a dried arbor. We're just going to see good old fashioned bite. So a good thought sees us here, which doesn't matter that much. Oh wow, well, they're just going to get the high right beats in. Getting tapped by a 3-3 Noble Hierarch. Ig Noble Hierarch, even. Love to see it. When will we get the rest of the cycle? Maybe Modern Horizons 3. We'll get some more. Alright, deck. Okay, so we're going to... Play this Grief. See what our opponent's one way out of this situation is. Hopefully it's just one way. We get to snatch it off from our opponent. And do the thing. Snuff out, we don't care about... Grist the Hunger Tide doesn't do anything here. Natural Order doesn't do anything if we take it. So it does do things if we don't take it, obviously. So this seems like the obvious one. Just uh, So this is Destroy. This is Indestructible. So take this. Goodbye to our little friend here. In our opponent's upkeep, we will make our friend. Because our opponent can have a Wasteland. They've got an Elvish Reclaimer, so... Chance of them having a wasteland in their deck. At least one wasteland is very high. Alright, we've got a 2020. If our opponent plays something like a an endurance this turn, we can just walk our way through it. Alright. This is more like how I expect games to go versus this deck. Um we got rid of the Caracas, have we done that? We could play a force of despair to just really jam our opponent if they chuck a load of stuff at us. That's certainly something I'm not opposed to trying. Um, maybe we'll trim a reanimate. Although we can snag one of our opponent's things too. Do I let Legolas's quick reflexes here? 
Not as much as I like to just to reanimate things, I think. All right, we'll try that. It's another black card, so it can help with our other plan. Uh, no, is what I'm going to say with this one. We do not have the ability to play spells. Uh, which is something that is kind of important. <laughs> okay, uh, this does get us there. We have some interaction. I think it's probably the underground mortuary that goes. So we can thought seize our opponent or Elvish Reclaimer on one. We probably Elvish Reclaimer on one rather than thought seizing. If our opponent's got an Elvish Reclaimer, that's probably going to play now. Okay. So I've got this Grist the Hunger Tide. So this is something I would like to remove from the equation. Kind of annoying how our hand has worked out here. But I think we just want to get a swamp. Do we want to buy you? No, I think we need a swamp here. Let's just take a bite out of crime here. Um, okay, so we'll take out the, the one card that does something this turn. Next turn we play Reclaimer and Thought Seize and take out the Natural Order before that gets up and running. And we can use our Reclaimer to go and find an answer for this Caracas. Okay. So next turn is go and get ourselves a Wasteland. A Fiend Artisan. A 2-2 Fiend Artisan. But this can definitely do some work and find some annoying things for us to deal with. So our opponent almost certainly has to play the Caracas out this turn. Because uh, crop rotation is lethal here. Obviously we don't have a crop rotation. If our opponent activates a Fiend Artisan, then we spin up the Wasteland straight away. So it's not like a reanimate. We can use it to get the Grist from our opponent. That's always an interesting one. But given what we have here, if we sacrifice the Thespian Stage, if we sacrifice this for a Wasteland, then we can Thespian Stage Wasteland our opponent in one turn cycle. So the Swamp is the one that's going to go here. Right, what did you find? It's, uh, another Fiend Artisan. That's fine. It's more mana for their Cradle. Taps for three. Play the other one. Tap for three. That's six. So a six drop that we care about. I don't think so. But they have to play the Caracas here rather than Double Cradle, surely. We are displaying a pretty powerful possibility right now. There's the Caracas, as predicted. All right, I think we're going to see Fiend Artisan doing some stuff here. So it's almost certainly going to be for an opposition agent. All right, goodbye, Swamp. Hello, Wasteland. Right, so I imagine this is the opposition agent. It could be an endurance. Their plan is just to like bulldoze their way through after just sort of blocking turn after turn after turn until they can get something going. All right, they've got the grist. Like that's fine. I don't really mind about that one. So they might have pivoted after we went and fetched anyway. So this can kill our Elvish Reclaimer if that's what they're worried about as well as generating some value over the course of the game. It is like a nice win condition that kind of just ticks away and gives them Fiend Artisan fuel. Like the Fiend Artisan Grist combo is pretty strong. Just always gives you things to turn into better things. But if they have a Ramanap Excavator, we don't want to make our Dark Depths. So we don't just want to wasteland this and make our guy to play around wasteland. Because if they have a Ramon Excavator, they can obviously just go and find it. And then replay the Caracas, and we've got nowhere. So we have to do it in the end step. Or if they don't have the mana to do it, then we can obviously work around that way. They are making an Insect. I think they are in an okay position. Okay, so this is not a thing we actually get to do anything with right now. So we play this out. Our opponent's got one turn to do something here. So how much mana can they generate this turn? Three mana, six, seven, eight, nine. So they could go and get the Crater Hoof. And we're only on 14. A Hierarch, that's effectively zero mana. Another guy, yep. So we might just be getting Crater Hoofed here again. Might just be one turn too slow. Oh, they milled the Crater Hoof, that's savage. All right. That might be the game there. We'll see what our opponent's got to show for this. We can make a big layer of the Hydra. All right, so there's the Cradle. 
So they've made their land drop. Everything is face up now. What are they putting the, into here? They don't have a second crate here, surely. They've already played the land, so I'm not worried about them playing a wasteland or something. If it's something with a trigger that blows our land up, we can obviously just react to it then. Alright, it's the Attraxa. Not the crate they were hoping for. Um, the Snuff Out is pretty good. We can Snuff our Reclaimer out. Right, so they got Snuff Out, Gaia's Cradle, Endurance. Right, so there's Endurance. Okay. Okay, they're shuffling their own Crate Hoof back into their deck for next turn. Let's go to this Caracas. Get out of here. 2020. They're going to let us untap. They let us play a land and they lose the game, I think. Oh, well, they let us play a land. Uh, that's pretty good. They could have snuffed out our Elvish Reclaimer to stop this from happening. Give us pro green. All right. I think our opponent had that game, actually. Like, they were unlucky to mill the... The crater hoops that definitely gave us an extra turn that we, we, I don't, I don't think we can soak up enough damage with our 2020. Then it's possible, but again, I'm not doing the maths. Uh, I'm tired anyway. Uh, but this turn, we know they have the snuff. Oh yeah, they didn't have a swamp. Of course, they didn't have a swamp. That's why they didn't do it. Uh sorry. Apologies, opponent. Yeah, if they had a swamp, then we probably lose this game as well. So we got a little bit fortunate on this one. Normally, this matchup is really good for tabletts, but I think we're slightly slower than. Turbinets here. So that extra turn we give our opponent can be a little bit awkward. But we managed to get through it. We are two and one. Let's go to round three. Okay, this hand looks a bit weird, but it does do our thing on turn three. We can go and get our Bayou here. So I'm going to keep this one. There's a lot of ways you can get bopped here, but our deck is basically Dark Depths plus some other stuff going on. So a hand that does the Dark Depths thing is one we have to keep. Is our opponent on traditional reanimator? No. They're on something spicy. This could just be the epic storm. They tend to run one bad lands, if I recall correctly. All right, so we're going to get beseeched. Red white mana. Burning wish. What is going on here? All right, our opponent's going to be reanimating this grizzle brand. We're going to exhume. Okay, our opponent's build is cool. If our opponent thought sees us, we will uh, scoop because we don't want them to see what we're playing. All right, our opponent's on a pretty interesting build of Reanimator with like Lion's Eye Diamonds and stuff. So I have to imagine there's some kind of like Tin Fins esque combo going on. Storm is seven. Storm is eight. Storm is nine. So any tendrils now is lethal. If they can like Dark Ritual out. What is this? Infernal Tutor. Like black, red, tin fins. Right flame. Okay. Cabal ritual. It's a lot of mana. Thought seize. No, thank you. I swear more people have probably conceded to the card thought seize than any other card, right? <laughs> okay. So our opponent might be doing some storm stuff in there. So I think we're going to want these. They've shown us they've got a bunch of artifact nonsense. So we're going to want these. Um, we're going to want our Graveyard Hate, since that's kind of how they got us just then. So I'll bring these in. Do you want Opposition Agents? We've seen Infernal Tutor, so that's certainly a possibility. Do we think our opponents will be playing any sort of Moon Effect? If they are playing a Moon Effect, how do we beat that? Hmm, that is a trickier one to answer, isn't it? So I don't believe we're going to need Legolas's Quick Reflexes. That's going to be surplus to requirement. I'm not convinced this is an Orcish Bowmasters matchup either. I could be wrong on that though, but it doesn't feel like it's that sort of matchup. Uh, the Caracas definitely has text here. So does the Bajuka Bog. So Jury Step allows us to push through if they've just got a Grizzle Brand sat there naked. Um, our own Reanimates look pretty darn good here. Like Grief Reanimate Grief is going to be very useful in this sort of matchup. We've just got too many things that are good here. Which isn't a bad place to be. Are we trimming on Dark Depths? We can trim a copy of Dark Depths. I don't hate that. I don't think I want to trim a Thespian Stage. They're going to be a pretty low resource deck by the looks of what we've seen. So the Wasteland might just be able to cut them out of resources entirely. I like the Elvish Spirit Guide for surprise crop rotation out of nowhere. Maybe we're cutting another depths 
Is that wild? Maybe we can cut a stage. We're we cutting two stages. If we're cutting these, we should probably also be cutting some some hex mages too. Um. All right, we're gonna go with this. We saw a decent chunk of our opponent's deck, but uh, it's an interesting one. All right, we're like to thought sees my opponent and Veil of Summer. Um, this is an interesting one. Uh, I think we'll keep this. So we could Elvish Reclaimer plus Grief on turn one. Or we could Thought Seize turn one and try and Grief turn two. I think Reclaimer plus Thought Seize is... Sorry, Re Reclaimer plus Grief is probably our best bet here. And then we can hold up Reclaimer afterwards for Arbor Duke Bog, which feels like a fine way to try and win this game. Our opponent's gone to four cards. And so our opponent's strategy is clearly a uh, very high power level when it hits the ceiling. So hopefully we're going to see the floor of it, which is where it needs a very specific selection of cards here. So I think we start off on the Bayou, and we just do a good old-fashioned Thoughtseize. Burning Wish, Dark Ritual. Uh, I guess Burning Wish is the thing that goes somewhere here. So we'll take that way. So because our opponent mulliganed, I decided to lead on the thought season instead. Maybe that's an error, but we'll find out soon, I guess. A buy. That's a pretty good draw. That gives us protection from our opponent in the form of Veil of Summer. Raucous Theatre. Getting themselves some surveil. They don't need mana. That's not the point that they need help with. So I wanted to try and get two bites out of their hand. And I figured we'd have a bit more time to draw the black card because of the fact that they had the... The horrible mulligan there. All right, we've got some. So we got some cards. Uh, so we can hard cast this Echoing Deeps next turn if we want to. Uh, sorry, hard cast this grief off the Echoing Deeps. So it only enters tapped if it copies something. We can play as a colorless land for grief purposes if we want to. Anyway, I guess you could have played that now and sacrificed that. But if we get a Bajuka Bog now, we can then get another Bajuka Bog. Although we've already got the Surge of Extraction. So we're just going to sit back with our little friend here. So what land would I like to get? We could get a Wasteland and just try and really put our opponent in the dirt. We could get a Thespian Stage here. And set up for the 2020. I don't hate that. Right, we've got quite a lot of powerful tools. Oh, that's another powerful tool, isn't it? Um, no. We just come in as a cave. Let's grief our opponent and see what they're working with. Thoughtsies, Unmask, Dark Ritual, Arcan of Cruelty. Hmm, a bunch of things here. Uh, I'm going to take the Arcan of Cruelty, and then I can surge and extract that if I print Thoughtsies us, because we're kind of shields down here. Right, we'll attack. We can also reanimate their Arcan of Cruelty as well if we want to. Right, we're going to see the Thoughtsies here. So we'll fire it off on this Archon. All right, our opponent's scooping to that. Interesting. So they're pretty graveyard centric. Uh, do I think they're going to have any kind of Blood Moon effect? If so, we'd have to determine which of the Blood Moon effects they have and how we want to beat that. I think Force of Despair is interesting here because it's just a turn zero spell we get to do something with. And I think having a turn zero spell is probably going to be more profitable than having this Opposition Agent. Because we can use that to just kill the Ark of Cruelty if that's what they go all in on. Uh, what are we looking at here? Paducah Bog. Grief reanimate grief. Yeah, this hand is pretty good. Now our opponent, if they just go on turn one, we don't really get to do anything. But I don't think we can try and fish for our one of Fairy Macabre. Our opponent's mulled to five so far. But they only need to, a few cards to do the thing that their deck does. But hopefully we'll get one turn. That's all I really need with this hand. Like, if they put Grizzle Brand into play, we can Caracas it. And that's not a thing they can disrupt with hand disruption. Unless they're playing that weird one that lets you discard lands from... I want to say Masks. Feels like something from Macadian Mask era. There's a discard spell that does let you hit lands, but nothing else. I think. Unless I've dreamt that in some sort of weird fever dream of wanting to ruin people's day. It might cost more mana as well. All right. My opponent's thinking long and hard on this five-card hand. Right, so they've decided to keep it. Please don't turn on me. Just be like a, 
Oh, and there's a saga. That was unexpected. A lotus petal. And a pass. Interesting. I'm curious what our opponent's up to here. I would like to see their hand. I think I can probably beat a saga. They're entombing right now. Interesting. This is obviously the the card they wanted to get out of their hand. So that's fine. Let's see. Uh, a shallow grave and a burning wish. I'll take your shallow grave, please. So I don't believe our opponent can reanimate this Grizzlebrand next turn. Because they will need to find a reanimation spell and a draw spell. And I don't think that's possible. So I'm going to play out our Elvish Reclaimer. Okay. That's that. And do I want this Caracas in play or do I want this Catacombs in play? I don't want the Catacombs in play. The Caracas can actually be useful later on. And I'm probably just going to be sacrificing this land anyway. So our opponent's probably going to go and get themselves a... Um, Alright, they're scooping. So they can get a Pithy Needle potentially for our Elvish Reclaimer. But we can just go and get a Paducah Bog in response. Or what we'd actually... Uh, yeah, so we can get a Paducah Bog in response. And then next turn we can just crop rotate into Yavimaya, then crop rotate this into Thespian Stage and kill them. So, yeah, I, I tend to find reanimated decks pretty good against our deck because we have, obviously, I'm used to playing Turbo decks, but like I said, we have access to main deck Graveyard Hate, which really helps. And we also have a combo that's not necessarily the easiest to, like, duress through because of it being lands and stuff. All right, so positive record locked in. We're three... Oh, no, we're four and oh. I thought we lost a round. I must have dreamt that. All right, so we are 4-0. Let's go for a trophy match. What do I think we lost to? Interesting. All right, trophy match it is. All right, we've uh, found our way into the final game here, or the final round. Uh, this hand seems all right. We can play Thoughtseize and Elvish Reclaimer on turn one, so I'm going to give this a little keep. That is a Tiger from our opponent. And a Green Sun's End. This is going to find them a Dryad Arbor. All right, not entirely sure what our opponent's up to, but that's okay. There's plenty of time to have a look. All right, another Thoughtseize. That could be useful. Let's see what they're working with. Uh, Morlock, Outland Liberator, Sylvan Library. If we want to play this Reclaimer, we don't really want this Morlock coming into play. That's for sure. All right, so we're going to take the Morlock. And then we're going to... I do think we need this Reclaimer in play. And then next turn we can use our Echoing Deep to turn that into a Thespian Stage or something. There is a Savannah from our opponent. We're going to see the library. Yep, there it is. And it's over to us. An Orcs Bowmaster would be an interesting draw here. We can ping this and then get some joy that way. So we know some of our opponent's hand. We need to get green mana is the problem. So if we play this Snow-Covered Swamp, we turn this Urborg into a Yavimaya. Where does that get us? It doesn't really get... So we can play this Echoing Deeps and turn it into a Wooded Foothills, but they will come into play tapped, and that's not very helpful. I don't think we need to thought these this turn. I think this is the turn where we get to sculpt with the Reclaimer. So I think this is just a Echoing Deeps pass. And we'll play this like this, and we'll pass the turn. So we're looking at some sort of Naya deck. Quite where they're going with it, I'm not sure. Morlock, Green Sun Zenith. Uh, it could just be like uh, Naya Maverick. Right, there's a goal of the components of a Maverick deck so far. All right, there is a Wasteland. That is a tough customer. Speaking of tough customers, that one is not our friend. Okay. I understand, opponent. Um, I really want a green source. Am I willing to exchange my Echoing Deeps for a green source? I think I am. It's an interesting time for our opponent's Wasteland. All right, we're just going to get this unwastelandable land. Are they going to fire off this Wasteland now? No. Interesting. A troll, that doesn't help us out here. We can play this Swamp. We can get two lands. But the problem is this Knight of the Reliquary is going to absolutely kick our ass. Uh, as it always does, really. It's uh, 
Not a card you like to see when you're playing the old depth strategy. We don't have a way of answering this either. I don't think we... I, th I think we just lose... We just straight up lose with our build to this knight unless we can get, like, the troll or something into play. Mm. Yikes. I guess we're passing. Don't like this one bit. I think our chances of winning this game are under 10%. There is a Sylvan Library... All right, they're not giving themselves extra cards. All right, with Foothills. The Outland Liberator. So all the cards we know from our opponent are in play. But how are we supposed to beat this Knight of the Reliquary? It's attacking. Okay. What is our solution for our opponent attacking? Um, interesting. Very interesting. All right, we will sacrifice this snow covered swamp and we will get ourselves a thespian stage here kind of keep it open this crop rotate mana whilst we can there is the dark depths um so our opponent has this is so annoying all right we play this out our opponent has the wasteland they also have the knight of the reliquary we kind of need to to beat what's going on here. We could go get crop rotation now and just hit this waste town, but then they just go get a Caracas and we get nowhere. So we have to... Uh, yeah, we have to make get our opponent to make a mistake because they don't know about the crop rotation in our hand. That's how we win this game, I think. We seem to have rustled ourselves into a position that's not terrible. But I don't think it's a position that's going to actually favour us winning this game. But I think we're above 10% now, so I'll take it. Birds of Paradise. Don't care about that. Please attack with the Knight of the Reliquary. That's what I want to see here. They did not attack with the Knight of the Reliquary. So how are we supposed to get through this now? Um, if we tap this down for this. We can't even do that, though, because then we just go shields down to the Wasteland. And the knight, because they've got two activations here of wasteland effects. Yeah, really, really struggling with the lack of pithing needle in our deck here. Okay, let's Bajuka Bog our opponent. Buy us some time. They didn't activate knight end step, that's interesting. So, also, they are a white deck, so source supply shares is a thing we're going to have to contend with too. So, it's just kind of one layer of awfulness on top of another for us here. All right. A fury. Okay, this game isn't about... Yeah, this game is about the Wasteland and the Knight. So maybe our opponent gets emboldened by this and attacks with the Knight. I doubt it, but we can hope. It's just the Trap Finder. Okay. Hmm... There's a thought see that doesn't really help us out here. We can cycle this troll. That gives our opponents information about like our backup plan. We don't really want them to know. Because I'm pretty sure we've lost this one. We need our opponent to attack with the knight. That's the only way we can try to win this game. Oh, they didn't activate the knight at end step either. They're just kind of holding up. So this is 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 of their finest damages. Like, as long as this knight is held up, we just can't win the game. We just have to surrender here. Legolas is quick reflexes. Unfortunately, our life total is too low to matter at this point, so we're just done. Yikes, that is a tough one. A real tough one. So, Opposition Agent is going to be great here. The Dismember is kind of essential. And is there Naya deck going to be running Blood Moons? No, they're, they're a Naya the Reliquary deck. That's not a thing they should have on their list. Um, do you want Surgery Extraction just to strip out all their Wastelands or Plows? That's certainly a possibility. Force of Despair I'm not big on, but it's another way of answering Knight, although Opposition Agent kind of does it already. So we've got these cards here. Do we think we're going to need this Caracas? Our opponent is probably going to be making Dark Depths of their own. So we probably do need to keep that one. Paducah Bog is obviously going to be useful too. There might be a Life in the Lone deck. So I don't think we get to strip any of this stuff out. Which means what goes. And that's where it becomes tricky for us. 
So Orcish Bowmasters here can ping down some little birds, but it's not actually going to do very much. So I think we get rid of that. I don't think we need the Spirit Guides here. And then we're looking at one more cut to fit these cards in. Maybe we don't need two Surgicals. Maybe we just have one in the deck. It's fine. Uh, so Orcish Bowmasters can ping down their Dorks. This isn't really a game about mana dorks. This is a game about knights. Although our orcish bowmaster can ping down their dork, which might buy us a turn before the knight gets active because they are a turn behind. No, I think we're just going to run it like this. And then just try and use our hand disruption to be good enough. Uh, okay, if we can get their knight of the relic ray, that's going to be pretty tasty. Okay, I'll take it. All right, our opponent's mulliganed. Our plan here is thought sees our opponent, get a Knight of the Reliquary from them. Failing that, we can always just cycle our troll and do troll things. Right, Knight of the Reliquary, there it goes. Does our opponent want to wasteland us here? That'll be pretty good, I won't lie. Horizon Canopy, they did not do that. Excellent. Okay. Uh, do we need to cycle this troll right now? I don't believe so. Boom. Okay. We have the Knight of the Reliquary now, so we are quite far ahead. This is just the best card in this matchup. We're going to get the library going. Sure. A Fury. Okay. I'm pitching a Lightning Bolt to that. Be my guest. Let's Swamp Cycle, get ourselves on the Bayou here. We could get the Underground Mortuary, actually. Maybe that would have been better. All right. So this will make our Knight bigger, so it's worth playing this. Reanimate the Knight. That's what this entire game is about. We've got the Crop Rotation here. We're going to assemble Dark Depths combo next turn, but they do have Wastelands. But if they Wasteland us, we get to make a pretty sizable attack with our Knight of the Reliquary. We can't actually get to the Jerry Step with this Crop Rotation. Right, there's the Windswept Teeth. I'd like to Swords to Plowshares our Knight of the Reliquary. I guess. I guess we could have had one extra life there if we'd have cracked this Burning Catacombs. That would have been smart. Yeah, I think our number is well and truly had here. Um, okay, that's an excellent card. But we're not going to keep up with this library. And our opponent's just going to be running circles around us here all right yeah these sorts of green white like wastelandy neither adequate source to plowshares decks are always horrible matchups for the green black depths deck so we uh we have not won the the matchup lottery here which is the way it goes sometimes oh what is this morlock x equals two so this is going to be a four I guess so if we draw either part of our combo we can combo whilst these wastelands are tapped right now okay that does it as well right, this is our one shot get around those wastelands hope they don't have a Caracas alright Jesus take the wheel they, they've got a library like they've got a lot of cards that they get to see this turn Right, they're cycling this Horizon Canopy first. That means they have more cards to put back with the library because it's the cards you've drawn this turn, which is why if you cast a Brainstorm before your library trigger resolves, it gets pretty squiffy. All right. Our opponent's still playing, so I think we might be losing our creature. All right, goodbye to our green source. Now they're going to plow us. Yep, all right. We're on 33 life, but we don't have anything going on. We found a little window where maybe we get there, but... Our opponents had two plows, two wastelands. What are we supposed to do about that one? Uh, I think we need a Sejiri step in play just for total mana sources here. I think we're also on the wait, the dismember the Morlock here. We got lots of life to reanimate some stuff, so that is a viable plan for us. But uh, feels like we're going to fall at the final hurdle today. Birds of Paradise, sure. All right, I think we just kill this one. Let's get this. We'll take two instead of four. We buy a lot of time, hopefully. But we've got this wasteland to get through. A grief. Well, if we find another land and our opponent doesn't wasteland us, then 
We can put a creature into play. Our opponent's only on eight because they've drawn a bunch of cards of library. So maybe the plan will get there. Maybe we are supposed to keep the Bowmasters in and just have all of the guys and just play like a, a boring guy plan. All right, so that's the the big hammerlock on the game, most likely, with the old Knight of the Reliquary. Not an easy card for us to beat. All right. Black, black, one, two. Fail the Mirror Breaker, you can go. So I need to keep two creatures back to block our grief. But that shouldn't be too difficult to do. And the knight can just gobble it up anyway. And they can always fetch up a Sajiri step to protect the other creatures so we don't even get anything out of it. Or they can block with the Dried Arbor and then turn the Dried Arbor into something useful. Once again, we are in a situation where we don't have good options. So this is another creature that can just outscale what we're doing. Oh, they're attacking with the knight. That's interesting. I guess they need to get our life total down. Right, the way sand in there. That makes sense. One card left in our opponent's hand, and it's Sylvan Library. Another grief. Um, I think trading for this scavenging ooze is acceptable. Oh, I just taken it. Okay, they don't want the trade. Now that's shut off our reanimation plans, and they can gain a little bit of life, grow their creature, grow their clock. God, this feels like an absolute nightmare matchup. All right. Pretty much just been beaten by the Sylvan Library in a lot of ways. They haven't, they've, they've drawn a few extra cards from it, but they've also, like, just been having a reasonable amount of filtering. They haven't had that many fetches and stuff for it. Okay. I'm curious what they do with this Endurance. They are going to shuffle our Graveyard in. I thought they might want to just start gaining loads of life because they have less creatures to eat now with their ooze. So they can attack with the Knight for six and then hold back two guys, or they can attack with the ooze. For three and hold back to you guys. Yep. And then they can go and find whatever they need with the knight. Dark Depths. We can't play this because our opponent just spins up the uh, Thespian stage and kills us. Which is not really how I want to be. Uh, we can't attack here. Yeah, we are just completely toasted here. Proper nightmare matchup. Surprised they kept the Fury in actually. I guess they did see the Reclaimer. Yeah, sure, we just take it, it doesn't matter here. Sure, you can scavenge you with a bunch. I don't think there's any point in continuing this one. Our opponent's got this. Alright, so we fell at the last hurdle and finished with a very respectable 4-1. Uh, which is nice. Uh, we can certainly see some of the power of some of the things we're doing in our deck. But let's talk about this list. So, we had the problem that we always have when we play Green Black Depths, which is the sort of, the green-white sort of, Depths, Maverick, that sort of ballpark of deck, lands, etc. Whatever you want to call it. And that's a bit of a doozy for us. We can't really do much about that one. We don't really have great tools to beat that. And if we're going slower with this build, then that makes it even harder because we can't get underneath some of their interaction either. So they're more likely to get set up with a knight. So we've probably got a worse matchup with them than regular Turbo Depths. Now there's some things in this deck that... I have concerns with that I don't think necessarily work. So the grief, we don't always have the cards to pitch to it. If you look at our black card count, let's put it all in one big pile. So we've got 20 black cards. Okay, that's more than I thought. But the problem is, quite often we were just having to grief reanimate, grief pitching reanimate, which is okay, but it's not really how you ideally want to use those cards. And Hex Mage isn't really something you want to pitch because it's doing other stuff. The troll isn't necessarily something we want to pitch because that's quite often one of our important mana sources. So we end up just pitching a Thought Seize and we could have just cast a Thought Seize or we pitch a Reanimate and we could have just cast a Thought Seize. Like it does give us some Reanimate draws later but it didn't feel amazing to me. Um, it didn't, didn't really feel like it was doing that much work and we didn't really win via the beatdown plan. I think we might have got there with a troll at one point, I think having Troll is more exciting to me than having Grief a lot of the time. Another problem I found with this deck is Orcish Bowmasters. Now, this is going to sound crazy, but generally speaking, the Depths decks have good matchups into the blue decks. That's not the problem for the Bowmasters, for, for the for the Depths, the Green Black Depths decks. The problem is, like, the, the combo decks can go underneath us, which is normally what we try and fix from the sideboard. And then, like, the Green White Depths decks, where I guess Bowmasters has a little bit of text and would have been good against the library there, to be fair. But 
I'm not sure Boy Masters does the things we want it to, although it does do one important thing, which is make a token so we can't be Shoulder's Edict. So I guess it's pretty reasonable against Shoulder's Edict and against those decks, like the blue decks with Shoulder's Edict. But I'm not wholly convinced by Ultra Boy Masters. And once again, Legolas's Quick Reflexes continues to disappoint me as a Magic the Gathering card. I just don't think this card is very good. Like one mana is a lot of mana for a protection piece. You need to kind of have everything set up. Like crop rotation as a protection piece, yeah, it costs one mana, but it also does everything else at the same time, right? It finds you your combo. It has all these cool tutor stuff. It's just, you know, great. Whereas Legolas's Quick Reflex is an incredibly narrow card that requires you to have extra green mana, which we sometimes didn't even have. And it also requires you to have that extra mana. So it's just too many steps of problems for the Legolas's Quick Reflexes, in my opinion. Um, what I will say is Elvish Reclaimer is looking very good right now. I think it's uh, one of the best one drops in the format, to be honest. It does so much work against these scam decks and just can single-handedly just put you in a good spot, especially since they're very light on removal. So I'm a big fan of having the Reclaimer in a deck like this. And we're quite heavy with our black mana, but we're only running four Hex Major, which also feels like a bit of an error. So I think if you're looking to play this exact list and do some tweaking, I think this is the slot where you want to be thinking about tweaking. And I do like the Echoing Deeps at the moment if you're running Reclaimer. I don't like it in the non-Reclaimer sort of depth builds, but if you're running Reclaimer, then that's fine. Because what this does is it allows you to get Paducah Bog, and then it allows you to get another Paducah Bog, which sometimes you will need against the Scandex, because maybe you get rid of, like, an early troll. And then you get to reload and say, okay, I'm now I'm going to get rid of like the big scary thing later on that sort of jam also we have these spirit guides in our deck and they feel fine but having two spirit guides is kind of a weird number we're not indexing super heavily on getting this sort of thing going but it is a little bit, bit of something we could also just play like one urza saga with like a pithing needle and a shadow spear as some targets like that's like a a three card package that might be interesting. We could even put a Mox in there, but I'm not really sure I want to do that. We could even put an Expedition Map to make it a four card package. So you could so you could cut four of these 11 cards for Urza Saga and three things to go with it. And then it does feel like we're a little bit shy of removal here. Like even out of the board, we've got like a couple of dismembers and we were just completely toasted to our opponent resolving like a Knight of the Reliquary. And the thing about our deck is we're going slower than Turbo Depths and we have less protection. We're not running our Knot of this world so we can try and, you know, overload a Knight of the Reliquary. We're playing slower, so we're playing more into those sorts of Knights and Reclaimer effects from our opponents. And we have less ways to defend ourselves from them. So I think in a lot of respects, we're making, like this deck is making ourselves a little bit worse against some of our bad matchups. Now that's not necessarily... A bad thing, but it's turning bad matchups into almost unwinnable matchups, which is not great. But what we are getting from playing this is the Elvish Reclaimer lines. So Elvish Reclaimer is really, really useful right now in the format, and the current build of Turbodeps that I have to record with next time around is Turbodeps with Elvish Reclaimer. So hopefully you'll enjoy that one when that shows up soon. Uh, probably be Maybe end of next week, something like that. It's in my queue, at least. But I'm not wholly convinced that we're we're a particularly effective grief scam deck. It just felt like it didn't really feel like that's what we're doing. Like this could have been pretty much any other discard spell, and it would have been about the same. Now, sometimes it being zero mana is fine. You know that that is kind of a nice boost sometimes. But I'm not wholly convinced that we're a great reanimate sort of scam style deck list here. So we could be fixing, you know, we could just be playing more protection and more stuff. It did just feel like we were a Depths deck that had Elvish Reclaimer and that was what was doing most of the work for us most of the time. And the Grief could have been an Inquisition of Kozilek and it would have been very similar in quality or a Duress or whatever. Although the fact that it can hit anything is not nothing. So it's definitely worth considering. But there is also this tension when we play the Grief that... We are enabling our opponent's reanimation. Same with the Troll of khazad We are kind of saying, okay, we do have this like little side plan that we can go into, but we are kind of getting ourselves into a position where our opponent might just be able to reanimate stuff of ours. And that's not 
ideal. So I think if you want to go a bit slower, what we used to play in slow depths back in the day was, you know, some abrupt decays and things. Although now, with some of the threats being the way they are, things like Assassin's Trophy gets a bit more tempting because abrupt decay used to be really good against Delver, but now they have a big seven mana dragon that you can't kill with it. So it's like, ugh, a bit awkward. Also, the lack of Pithy Needle in this deck, we didn't really find that coming up too much, but it's certainly a thing that could have jammed us up more in a whole host of other matchups. So... Even though we got the pretty good 4-1 record, we, we, you know, we got to a trophy match. We got absolutely slaughtered in the trophy match. But uh, um, I think we did, that did show that like the core of what this deck is doing is good. And the Elvish Reclaimer is probably where you want to be with depth strategies now. Which, like I said, is something I'm recording with soon. But I'm not really sure we want to be going all the way down into you know this, this level of stuff. Like we, If we want to be going fast with Turbo Mana, we should be... Dedicating more slots to turbo. If we want to be going down like the scam route, I, I just I just don't think the scam route is exactly where I want to be. I don't think Legolas's quick reflex is good enough either. If troll was a seven five, then uh, not this world would be a little bit. Then I could see this a little bit more because then we'd have a creature that we can reanimate that actually gets protected by other protection spells. That's kind of why we're running reflexes here because we're running these sort of other guys. But they're not necessarily that worth protecting sometimes. Like Troll is, sure. But protecting a Grief doesn't feel amazing. Protecting a Bowmasters in some matchups is okay. But otherwise it's not going to be amazing. We're not going to get much bonus off of the attacking ability. We can obviously untap our Reclaimer. But that's usually quite an expensive line. and isn't really going to get us there anyway. So it feels like this whole section of the deck could pretty much just be something else. And it would have performed almost identically to how it performed today. That's kind of the vibe I'm getting from having played this. But, you know, the green-black turbo depth strategy at the moment is pretty solid. And I think having the extra reclaimers in as a tutor feels really strong right now. And this sort of selection of cards isn't that important. So you don't need to rush out and buy some Bowmasters and Griefs and things. All right, I think we're done for today. I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, thank you to the donor who... Got me to play this one it's nice to play you know some slightly different builds and pull in other stuff going on i do try to mix up the depth decks i play whilst also you know getting some relatively regular turbo depth content but whenever you try something new and other people's lists are succeeding then you kind of push the envelope a little bit and maybe you learn some stuff and maybe try some stuff that doesn't work but you're still learning which is kind of how i felt like some of this went today so it was a nice mix match of learning winning there's some cool plays and we had some wonderful 2020 action, as I love to bring all you wonderful people. All right. We are done for today. So thank you so much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. It really does help the channel out. And it's growing really nicely now. We're getting towards that 3,000 subscribers mark, which is kind of a big deal. And uh, would mean a lot to me. All right. Thank you once again. And goodbye. If you'd like to support me in the channel, please check out my Patreon. It has a free guide to budget turbo depths as well as three tiers of support. A low cost one that enters you into my monthly raffle for a free donation deck on the channel. A mid tier subscription that gives you access to my detailed turbo depths guide that is updated every month as well as regular articles. And lastly, the higher tier gives you all of the above as well as a monthly donation deck for my channel. If you're interested in supporting the channel this way, please check out the link in the description.